Welcome to A Perfect Touch. I'm Jeanette. November 14th of 2020 was the day the Regency Society of Virginia had organized a Zoom get-together, including inviting Charles Burns, the silhouettist from the UK. I reserved my place as a birthday gift to myself, and I had made the Regency overdress, which I detailed in a blog post and the first of a two-part video. This is the second part. I had purchased the Wingio pattern for a gathered day hat, which was in the same time frame as the overdress pattern, also by Wingio. I traced the pattern and all the markings onto single layer buckram. and then doubled the buckram by wetting, layering together, and allowing it to dry. This would provide a bit of extra strength so that the hat could withstand travel and packing. The red silk outer layer and the gold silk lining is cut for the crown tip, crown side, and brim. Millinery wire is sewn to the crown tip at the seam line, and millinery wire is also sewn to the crown side at the lower edge. Here you can see me stitching through the same hole twice in what creates a locking stitch. Tabs are cut in the crown tip up to the seam line and the center front and center back marks are aligned and pins temporarily hold the tip to the side. I use a curved needle to sew through the crown tip behind the millinery wire and through the crown side. The crown is finished and I can make adjustments at this point for fit before sewing the center back seam to the lower edge. Following the pattern markings, 
I sew gathering stitches in a circle on the crown tip outer fabric. The cover is basted over the crown tip and gathered in place. The gathering threads are sewn on the long side band according to the pattern markings. To make sure my sewing is even, I temporarily tape a piece of ribbon to the machine to use as a sewing guide. I've marked the center front and the center sides of the fabric and I evenly gather until the fabric fits the crown. The fabric is pinned at the crown tip edge and can now be stitched together easily with a curved needle. After the top edge is stitched, the gathers are adjusted as necessary and the lower fabric edge turned to the inside and basted to the buckram. The gathered crown is finished. With the exterior of the hat complete, I begin assembling the crown lining and the interfaced and lined brim. I pin the lining into the crown, stitch at the seam line, making sure to overlap the back seam, fold the brim lining under to cover the seam line, and hand stitch the brim lining to the interior, just covering the seam line. The basic hat is covered and completely sewn. I had added some color to the overdress with gold silk covered piping. There are a few bias strips left, and as I was assembling the hat, I started to think it might be fun to add some gold bias bands at the stitching lines on the hat, and maybe some embroidery. So I do a little sample, and I put it out to my friends for a vote. Embroidered is the winner. The sample embroidery doesn't play well with my pre-cut bias strips, but I find one that does, and it is beautiful with the floral on the buckle for the overdress. I trimmed the stabilizer to the width of the finished band and I stitched the band closed at the back. The bands circle the hat and create offset loops which will hold the feathers. This makes travel and packing easier as the feathers can be removed. Having just three basic red feathers in my stash, I curled the feather around a large curling iron to give it a beautiful curve.
I curl the barbs over a scissor edge, the same way you would curl gift ribbon. And then I stitch the centers of all three feathers together with a ladder stitch, creating a full plume. The bands and loops are tacked to the hat. The Regency Gathered Day Hat is finished. Time to get ready for the Regency Society of Virginia Zoom get together and what is secretly my birthday party. This calls for a treat and life is better with what? Cookies. Time for the party. After a wonderful presentation about the history of silhouette making, Mr. Charles Burns is introduced. He begins to cut the silhouettes for those in attendance who have commissioned him, and when my turn comes, he cuts my silhouette as well. I'm thrilled to have such a beautiful memory created, and several weeks later, my silhouette arrives in the mail along with the rest of the page it was cut from. A treasure to remind me of creating peace and happiness during a difficult time in history. There were a few scraps of fabric left from the overdress and the gathered day hat, and I decide the gown and hat need a reticule. I had purchased the e-pattern for a drawstring pedal reticule from Lynn McMaster's Out of a Portrait and this is a perfect time to give those fabric scraps a purpose. There's not enough fabric to cut the pieces on proper grain lines, but I improvise. I have some embroidery samples on bias strips left from the hat creation, and I decide to wrap those around piping to edge the petals. I embroider a bit of additional bias. All the pieces are cut for the reticule. Piping is sewn inside the bias strips using the machine zipper foot. I've never seen this done before, and I've certainly never done this before, but I do like the special touch the embroidered piping adds. Then I hit a snag. Should the reticule be red with gold petals or gold with red petals? 
I'm in a Zoom meeting and decide to ask the attendees and my Facebook and Instagram friends, and it is an easy decision for them. Which did you choose? The red bag with gold petals won the vote and the piping is sewn on. The outside of the reticule is sewn together, leaving openings on two sides for the drawstrings. The lining is sewn, leaving an opening to turn the reticule right side out after it is sewn to the outside. The outer fabric and lining are hand sewn together at the piped petals. The reticule is turned right side out through the hole left in the lining and the hole in the lining sewn closed. The junction where each petal meets is hand sewn closed, turning the piping to the inside for a clean look. I had already made one of the tassels according to the directions from Lynn McMasters and decided it was time to try that technique again. This was my very first tassel and I was really happy to have made it. I had purchased number 50 tire silk from Superior Threads, still had some of the wood beads I used before, and had some red pony beads which will be a nice size for this reticule. I have all my supplies gathered according to the instructions, and while I can't give you a complete step-by-step -step tutorial since this is the property of the original creator, I will tell you that the e-pattern and all instructions for the twist cord, bead covering, and tassel creation, as well as everything you need to know to put it all together, are available from her website at outofaportrait.com. This is her beautiful creation made with silk velvet. So here is just a short picture show of my creating the twist cord and tassels. Twist cord supplies and one completed twist cord. Pony beads covered with silk thread. Supplies for making tassels the start of creating a tassel, three or six tassels to be sewn, larger wood bead covered, three tassels ready for final assembly, two tassels steamed and one before steaming, and three tassels steamed. With the tassels finished and a small rosette created for the bottom of the reticule where that tassel will attach, the drawstring pedal reticule is finished. Time to put the overdress and accessories together for another party of tea and cookies and the addition of a fan that I made at Lynn McMaster's class at Costume College. <laughs>